A short reading from the Orthodox Way by Archimandrite, if I remember, Father Callistos Ware. Chapter 1 God as Mystery. Unknown and yet well known. 2 Corinthians 6 9. God cannot be grasped by the mind. If he could be grasped, he would not be God. Evagoras of Pontus. One day some of the brethren came to see Abba Antony, and among them was Abba Yosef. Wishing to test them, the old man mentioned a text from scripture and started. Starting with the youngest, he asked them what it meant. Each explained it as best he could. But to each one, the old man said, you have not yet found the answer. Last of all, he said to Abba Yosef, and what do you think the text means? He replied, I do not know. Then Abba Antony said, truly, Abba Yosef has found a way. For he said, I do not know. The sayings of the Desert Fathers. As a friend talking with his friend, man speaks with God. And drawing near in confidence, he stands before the face of the one who dwells in light, unapproachable. Saint Simeon, the new theologian. The otherness, yet nearness, of the eternal. Who, what, or who is God, the traveler upon the spiritual way, the further he advances, becomes increasingly conscious of two contrasting facts of the otherness, yet nearness of the eternal. In the first place, he realizes more and more that God is mystery. God is the holy other, invisible, inconceivable, radically transcendent beyond all words, beyond all understanding. Surely the babe just born, writes the Roman Catholic George Terrell, knows as much of the world and its ways as the wisest of us can know of the ways of God, whose sway stretches over heaven and earth, time and eternity. A Christian in the Orthodox tradition will agree with this entirely. As the Greek fathers insisted, a God who is comprehensible is not God. A God, that is to say, whom we claim to understand exhaustively through the resources of our reasoning brain turns out to be no more than an idol fashioned in our own image. Such a God is most emphatically not the true and living God of the Bible and the church. Man is made in God's image, but the reverse is not true. Yet in the second place, this God of mystery is at the same time uniquely close to us, filling all things, present everywhere around us and within us. And he is present not merely as an atmosphere or nameless force, but in a personal way. The God who is infinitely beyond our understanding reveals himself to us as person. He calls us each by our name and we answer him. Between ourselves and the transcendent God, there is a relationship of love, similar in kind to that between each of us and those other human beings dearest to us. We know other humans through our love for them and through theirs for us. So it is also with God. In the words of Nicholas Kaba Silas, God our King is more affectionate than any friend more just than any ruler, more loving than any father, more a part of us than our own limbs, more necessary to us than our own heart. These then are the two poles in man's experience of the divine. God is both further from us and nearer to us than anything else, and we find paradoxically that these two poles do not cancel one another out, on the contrary, the more we are attracted to the one pole, the more vividly we become aware of the other at the same time. Advancing on the way, each finds 
that God grows ever more intimate and ever more distant, well known and yet unknown, well known to the smallest child, incomprehensible to the most brilliant theologian, God dwells in light unapproachable, yet man stands in his present with loving confidence and addresses him as friend. God is both end point and starting point. He is the host who welcomes us at the conclusion of the journey, yet he is also the companion who walks by our side at every step upon the way. As Nicholas Cavasilis put it, he is both the inn at which we rest for a night and the final end of our journey. Mystery yet person, let us consider these two aspects in turn. The next section is God is mystery. I do so love Father Callisto's where's uh, work. Highly recommend. 